wheels on fire and do a jump. At night, it could be quite spectacular, don't you think? Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Feeling good, Lewis? Those 80s kids remember... And welcome to Those 80s Kids Remember, the podcast where we reminisce and ponder the great spandex to decade and ask the important questions such as, who are you going to call? Do girls really just want to have fun? I'm Rob, and with me today are the rest of Those 80s Kids. Greg. Andy. Brian. All right, let's get started. And so this week's topic is hair metal bands. Oh, the great hair metal bands. Haven't dated at all. Give me the five. Uh, <laughs> what? They haven't dated at all. Like that. <laughs> yes. yeah. So when I say hair metal bands, give me the first five bands that come to your mind. Oh, poison. God. Well, uh, uh, Poison, Rat, Motley Crue. Rat. Rat, rat and Roll, baby. <laughs> yeah. Twisted Sister. Yeah. That's I, a good one. I always think of Twisted Sister. Yeah. D. Snyder and Twisted Sister. Brian? You... Were you, a, were you a hair metal aficionado back in the 80s? No. I mean, I knew of the bands. And actually, the song by Rat, their big song that they had, what was it? Um, Round and Round. Round. Love that song. Yeah, I used to like, uh, I, I, I wouldn't want my brother to catch me like watching the video because I didn't want him <laughs> thinking I liked that kind of music. So I would have to watch it by myself. But for some reason, I really liked it. And I liked that guy's voice. Oh, Stephen Piercy? Is that his name? Piercy, yeah. Okay. Hey, I oh, remember that. Scared. Wow. <laughs> Dude, back, at, back in the day when I was in junior high, I bought heavy metal magazines. Okay, I, I bought like, like Hit Parader, I think, was one. Circus, I think, was another oh, one. Oh, yeah, yeah, Circus. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because I was, I was more of a Teen Beat guy. <laughs> Keeping up with the Corys and Kirk Cameron Steve and uh, Scott Bayo and <laughs> 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 Well, along with well, that... Poison just flat out scared the hell out of me. Really? Well, yeah. Yeah, Poison scared the living shit out of me. They scared you? Well, they were kind yeah, of creepy they were looking. Yeah, they Some were... of the covers on their albums, they had um, gobs of makeup on. Well, look what the cat dragged in. I've always said, uh, any guy who didn't look at the cover of Look What the Cat Dragged In, and the first thought that probably popped into their head was... Wow, those chicks are hot. <laughs> they they look like hookers. They look like female hookers. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's interesting though is like it started out in the early seventies and you had kind of your glam thing, but then it fell out of favor. Yeah. With the exception of Kiss. Now Kiss was kind of doing the thing in the late seventies, but then all of a sudden, what made it like? What was the spark? What made it all of a sudden like, hey, we should dress up like chicks and make real crappy metal. Mm -hmm. Motley Crue did it to some degree too. Oh yeah, yeah. Motley Crue was, but it was Twisted Sister. I think it was right. that was like the one that kind of launched it again. It's kind of like the Nirvana, yeah, of of the hair metal. Because Dee Schneider, yeah. Was... I don't know that I thought of Twisted Sister as chicks. I just thought of them as really ugly clowns. <laughs> oh, Dee Snyder, man. Yeah, Dee Snyder could scare little children in those videos, God, man. Yes. And he's not... huge. I think he's like six eight or something. He's a big guy. Is he? Yeah, he's a big dude. Well, wasn't he, like, playing in a band for, like, 15 years and they didn't have any success? And all of a sudden it's like, hey, maybe if we just paint our faces and go out on stage. Yeah, grow our hair long. <laughs> you know? And then they got the guy from Animal House to be in their videos, too. Oh, you know, what right. do you want to do oh, with your life? Yes. The, the pledge pitting guy. The from... spitter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, because the songs really, the songs weren't that great. Well, the it was terrible. the videos, and it was the, the, the clown look and all of that. Well, it was like the drummer didn't drum. It was just like a you know like steady beat, and the guitar yeah. solos weren't really great. It wasn't. It was, But when you're a 12, 13-year-old boy, it was like, yeah, this is really cool. Yeah. You know? it's, oh, oh, look, at the, look at those leather pants. Those guys are cool, <laughs> yeah. man. Aquanetted hair. They're but badass. Str strangely enough, nobody then turned around and like emulated them and started wearing makeup. You'd, you'd think that would have been like, oh, I'm gonna right. I'm gonna put my fruity makeup on and go, you right, know, go to school. Go to school like, but yeah, nobody I did. That early. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a little bit. Yeah, I think I, the '80s were a little too conservative for that sort of thing. Probably would have gotten you beat up. I don't know though. People were wearing pink pants and pink sweaters, and but that was like a preppy thing. I mean, that 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 was kind of more the the preppy thing. It was okay to be 
that way if it was in a conservative way. But if you're talking like donning like typical chick stuff. This is true. That's look that's at Dead or Alive. Extreme. You guys remember that band? That's not metal, but it's. Do you remember them Dead or Alive? Oh, what absolutely. they look like? Oh, right. absolutely. No, you spin me around. <laughs> yes. is, that, is that? Yeah, it's okay. Yes. Yeah, those are straight up chicks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what, what, not that there's anything wrong with that because there's not. But they, they're that the main guy. That's a straight up chick. Yeah, yeah. Well, what about what the hell was the, the name of that group that sang "And I Ran"? Flock of Seagull. Oh yeah. <laughs> what the hell was up with that dude's hair, man? All of them. All of them had... The, all freaking, of them? Yeah, oh, yeah. It's been so long since I've seen the video. They were all kind of weird freaking hairdos. Yeah. But I, I, we're talking about the hair thing. My my big group was Motley Crue. I was a big crew head. Which one's the one that looked like a... I mean, really looked like a chick? Was it... It's not Nikki Six. Was it Nikki Six? Well, they, they all looked like chicks in the beginning. Cause they, except for Mick Mars. Mick Mars was just too damn ugly. Yeah, okay. But... But because they were wearing so damn much makeup at the beginning when they had all that Satanistic crap on. Remember they were wearing like armor and stuff in the beginning when oh, they were doing wow, shout, yeah. Oh, yeah. shout at the devil, you know, when they were doing all that stuff. And the, and the pentagram. Pen- yeah, the yeah, pentagram. The pen- they kept the pentagram for years. And it was kind of like, and with that all came, it was like, oh, they're satanic. You know, this was back in the day when bands could no. still be satanic. They weren't satanic, but no, but that's what no, people. No, no, no. But that's yeah. what. But that's what like some of these religious right people are. Yeah. Oh my God. You know, nowadays nobody goes. Oh my God, it's a Satan satanic band or whatever. I mean, it just doesn't. It's like. Oh, yeah. hey man, I remember when I was a little kid in the seventies. I remember there were adults who legitimately thought Kiss was they were Satanist. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. they thought Kiss yeah. Kiss stood for something, didn't it? Yes. Like, I, I don't. I'm sure it was an acronym of some sort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. including some, Satan. Yeah, one something with it. One of the S's was Satan. Satan. Yeah, yeah. But I don't remember what in the hell it was. Speaking of acronyms, one of these hair metal bands was Wasp, and that was supposed to stand for "We Are Sexual Perverts." I think that actually <laughs> did stand for "We Are Sexual Perverts." <laughs> wow, really? Blackie, I didn't know Blackie that. Lawless. Oh, yeah. Blackie Lawless, good one. Yeah, good name drop. Wow. But yeah, then Motley Crue, like uh, Vince Neil, got in that car wreck and killed that. Oh, that drummer from that from that glam right. metal band and got like uh, got like two oh and a half God, weeks right. in jail for it. <laughs> Even yeah, he it was he, a drunk he, driving crash, wasn't it? Yeah, he killed the guy. Yeah, he killed, killed the guy. guy. They were partying for like two straight days. He was fueled up on booze and cocaine and shit. And they went out to get more booze. Right. And Vince Neil was driving, crashed the car, killed the guy, and got like two and a half weeks in prison. You sure they weren't going to get more makeup? <laughs> when, so when, when was that? Was running, in the, what what year was that? Was that towards the? That, that was like after Shout That was that. Yep. Because that was what prompted Vince Neil to write the song "Home Sweet Home." Oh, I think God. he wrote okay. that when he was in prison. So when did he start his dissension in looks and start morphing into Eileen Warlos? <laughs> he's a pretty ugly, ugly dude now. Well, well, because remember when Theater of Pain came out? After that, they started they started like wearing pink. Remember that wow. shit? They were like wearing pink yep. and their hair was all teased up. They ditched the armor. Oh, that's right. They were wearing like scarves and shit. They were... Cocaine's a hell of a drug. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then exactly. they ditched that look two years later and started turning, and they turned into Harley dudes. Mm-hmm. With girls, girls, girls. Next, to, Now they're biker dudes, you know? They're wearing hankies around their neck and, you know, hanging out at the strip club. When they could have been that the video was the closest thing to porn I think I had seen at that age. Oh, <laughs> girls, girls, girls! God, yes. yeah. I used to love White Snake's videos too with Tawny Katan. Oh, on the car. Oh yeah. Making sweet love to David Coverdale. Yeah. I thought she was making Be- sweet love to Before she dated the car. Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> well, she was too. Yeah, but. What of a car. She was in another video too. Uh, Is this love? Right. Where uh, her yep. and her and Coverdale start dry humping at the end of the video. Out Remember, the she ended up dating Jerry Seinfeld for quite a while. Wow. On the show, she did. No, in real life. Really? Really? Tawny? Yeah. Because she because she was dating him on the show. She was the one where uh, him his brain and his dick were playing right. chess. Right. She was the one that all she wanted was sex. Yeah. She was the actress. No, they yeah. dated. They dated in real life. Oh. Now she's on celebrity rehab or what? Oh, she's a mess. <laughs> yeah, she got exactly. she got arrested for uh she was married to the pitcher, uh Chuck um because she got arrested for attacking him. Yeah. yeah. She got arrested for attacking him a number of years back. She like flipped out and attacked Chuck Finley and got thrown in jail. Hmm. 
She crazy. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> Bitches be crazy. What, what makes a girl go from a nice glam rocker to a baseball pitcher? <laughs> There's something wrong there. There's just something wrong. Well, so hair metal bands, and then of course I remember we had we were on the bus and these kids, you know, like 12, 13, they came with this giant one of those boom boxes. Remember those boom boxes back then? It was a big silver thing and it yeah. was about four feet long and five feet wide. Yeah. And you know, you put in eight big D batteries and it died an hour later. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they were yeah, because I had a, a a friend of mine who in first grade brought a boom box to school with him. And and I kid you not, this happened. He he had uh, beat it by Michael Jackson on this boombox, and he was just walking around at recess playing beat it over and over and over again, <laughs> walking around, walking backwards, walking frontwards, walking. dancing. And he had a line of people following him, wow. dancing, dancing and walking behind him. It was like a music video. God, the 80s were messed up. <laughs> was he, was he, was he, a, he was a good dancer then, I guess, right? I don't remember, man. I was I was in the sandbox playing with He-Man, I think. Well, see, it was a it was a big deal when you came to school and you had the boombox. It's like, whoa, yeah. whoa. And eventually it morphed into the Walkman. Well, well I was going to say, boom, they weren't cheap. No, they were boom expensive. Box. That's no, why nobody no, had they one. They were not cheap. But they're these big silver monstrosities. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you got the Walkman. It was like, whoa. Yeah. You know, with the big dorky looking well, headphones that were like yellow or orange. Then it was like, now I can't bother people with my metal anymore, man. This, <laughs> yeah. is, this is no fun. It's going, it's going introspective, man. Yeah. You know, I'm a, I guess it's an introvert, extrovert type thing. You know, they were listening to Queensrÿche, I think, yeah. <laughs> Queens, <laughs> getting all introspective. Was that nineties? Was Queensrÿche nineties or late eighties? Oh, they were eighties. Yeah. yeah. But you know, the thing about the hair metal bands is like Pantera. Oh, God. Pantera and Queensryche are like the same band. To me. Yeah, but <laughs> I, don't even, I think they actually are like, the same band. To me, in my brain, they're the same band. See, to me, in my opinion, the late '80s produced some of the worst music around. Yeah, see, I hated. It, it was terrible. I hated this this heavy hair metal. metal. Well, heavy metal was like Judas Priest, Black Sabbath. I mean, that stuff was good, but then all of a sudden, it more it morphed into this like. I mean, it was it, more like pop. Well, okay, so Poison. The, so yeah, the hair yeah. metal started out. You had your Motley Crue and all this, and it was like I think it kind of appealed to like you know your teen boys. But then pretty soon it was like, wow, chicks are listening to this, and it morphed into the hey, let's make music for the chicks. You know, like every yeah. rose has its thorn. Poison. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's dirty. So, again, so, it's just it's poison. So, it's so dirty to me. Yeah. So, but by the time the late '80s came, it was like the music was so bad. I mean, the early '80s up through the mid '80s had some really cool music but the late days this stuff was terrible oh, yeah, yeah. This i just was... I, I hated all the heavy metal i hated the hair bands just my sister she liked poison she had like a couple of their albums and um you know it's what it was what it was on mtv all the freaking time oh yeah you know you couldn't get yeah. get away from it and i just i just hated it with the passion i don't know if it was because the 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 pinnacle of the time is when i was in catholic school for two years and i was Ooh. very very, you know, goody kind of two shoes, kind of like the thing with the, the whole Satan kind of aspect with this, with yeah. this with music and stuff like that. So I just, I absolutely hated but hair metal. You couldn't like, I, I mean, when you're looking at Poison, there, there was no Satanistic thing no, about. I mean, Black not. Sabbath was like, they I could see why that would freak your parents out, but but I mean, they, these, they, it's just they look dumb. Well, I think the argument was with with the Poison was like the gender bender, you know, the gender oh, bending. Oh, they were glam when they right. came out. There yeah. was a right. there was a lot of the gender bending going on right. in the eighties, though. I, I think that's I mean, if what kind of If you looked at Duran Duran, I right. mean, especially the early years. Boy George. Those are yeah. Those are some well, chicks. And some pretty good looking. <laughs> and and, and as a the... guy, I was a musician. I wanted to be in a band. I was in a band. And, it, and if I had tried to dress like some of my favorite guys in Duran Duran, I'd have gotten my ass. Right. <laughs> right. And I think that's hey, who's kinda, the chick? you know, apart aside from the the Satan aspect, I think that the disapproving parents were like, Well, you're gonna turn our sons into girls kind of, you know, kind of thing that, you know, it's not appropriate for boys to look right. like this. I think that's but that's why Striper came. God, God <laughs> sent God, Striper. Yes. God sent Striper and saved us all. God, uh, 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 praise Jesus, heavy metal group. That's exactly what everybody needed. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. Yep, they were groundbreakers, boy. Yeah, Striper. I don't know, it was Petra, but a Petra wasn't so much. Petra was the guy from Head East. I want to say went in there. I've heard of them. Petra? 
Oh, yeah. no. right. And then you saw their videos. Their videos would be just like any other heavy metal band. Yeah, exactly. You know they're not in prayer when they're not on stage. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I remember like uh, with Striper, uh, their big hit was that ballad, Honestly. You remember that song? Oh, yeah. That song? I love you, can you see? <laughs> so, you, you don't remember that song, honestly? Oh, God, it was terrible. You, you it gotta, was awful. You got to wonder, because you hear all these tales about like rock concerts, the girls will try to get backstage. You got to wonder, yeah. like, at a striper concert, where they like try to get backstage and pray with the band or something? <laughs> <laughs> no. See, like I say the same thing was going on backstage that. there that was going on at a Molly <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Did you ever did you ever see like uh, uh, remember back in the late nineties when those uh, uh, behind the music's got really popular? Yeah. Did you ever see oh, the Poison yeah. one? No. The Poison one. They could make one. anybody interesting. They could make any artist interesting oh, with those shows. Dude, I hated Poison, but the Poison behind the music <laughs> was one of the most entertaining things I ever saw in my life. It's because it, like the footage that they showed was like this this. 20-something-year-old girl. I, and, and this is the first thing that pops into my head whenever I think Poison fan. There's this girl, she was wearing, she was a blonde, wearing acid-washed jeans, and her hair, half of her hair, her bangs were hanging over one of her eyes, and the other half were standing <laughs> up. And she's standing in the camera going, Okay! Like, I think Poison kicked serious ass! And, then, and I'm in love with Brett and Michael and all this stuff. I was like, that's it? That's Poison in a nutshell right there. Which is a very good segue to also some related things. And then we get into the whole moose hair gel thing and things yeah. like that. I mean, that there was definitely the 80s hair, mm -hmm. you know, which uh, you may or may not have worn in the 80s, Andy. I, you know, I didn't, and, well, to an extent, I didn't. There were the girls that did the, I would refer to them as plants, right on the, their bangs. It was just basically, they would just, stand up. Oh, yeah. Would stand, I mean, it would just be this whole, like, house plant. Right on the four, you know, the, yeah. the, the oh. front quarter of their head. Everything oh, because they hairspray it up to where it was yeah. Yeah. It was like totally mousse gelled, hairsprayed and everything. And it just, it was like its creation of its own. And I'm yeah. sure it like took three hours for them to get it that way in the morning. Because you have your hair pulled back right now. Uh -huh. and, and there was girls that would have their hair pulled back right. except for this big, big bush <laughs> that was sitting on their forehead. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 oh. That was the... Big what? It was like a, like a if, big bush, like right? Like it was a blonde, like if it was a blonde girl, she would have this big bush of blonde hair just sitting on her fucking on her forehead. It was it was hideous looking. It was so wait a minute, the blonde girl had the big bush. Yes, yeah, which one had the on her forehead? <laughs> well, guys, guys didn't have all that. We we really didn't have hair. We had the feathered hair. Well, we so looked stupid. We had well, mullets. Mullets. Mullets was mullets? like the horror. We had, and yeah. perms. Yeah, Guys had perms 80s. back then. I, I want to say the perm was an earlier 80s thing and the mullet was the later 80s. Mm, we had we had both. In the I never 80s. had a perm. There is, there is no worse look on a guy than a combination perm mullet. <laughs> I, had it. I had it in junior high. That, that's a bad look. Yeah. Oh, it was terrible. It was terrible. I I, I had a, a school picture. I think I looked like Weird Al Yankovic without the mustache. <laughs> it's terrible. I had the I had the mullet though. I looked like fucking BJ and the Bear. <laughs> I thought I looked really cool. I saw footage of you playing the guitar from like 1987. Yeah, it was like Greg Evigan or something. You you were business in the front, party in the back, man. Yeah. Big right. time. Right, big time. <laughs> business. Yeah. Then there was there was also the the faux hawk. Don't remember that. You don't, the faux hawk is where you kind of basically, it's not like a full-on mohawk like the punk rockers had where it like stood up, but it was kind of like a mullet, except for the, the sides were cut really, really short, the kind of shaved just above the ears. I remember the faux hawk. Bono, oh. Bono had one kind of like yeah. the, uh, um, yep. the under blood red sky. Yeah. Or at Red Rocks. Live at Red Rocks, I think, would be a good example of, of the faux hawk. Also, okay. not the best look in the world. No. <laughs> not at all. Not the best look. <laughs> like, a, like um, could that be considered a faux hawk if, if it was somebody, like, who had the sides of and the back of their head kind of shaved down, but then had the hair on the top slicked back? 
Yes. You remember that look? Yeah. That like yep. James James Spader had that in uh, in Less Than Zero, where he played oh, Rip the drug dealer. Right. He was so sleazy in that. <laughs> he was he was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Everything about that movie screamed late eighties. The hair, the he cocaine, was the clothes, selling the drugs and running a gay sex ring. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just typical high school. You well, know, we too. all did that a little bit. I mean. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Just another Tuesday. Here's yeah. here's one we haven't talked about yet: the jeans. Oh, acid wash. Acid, acid wash. wash. Yes. Yeah. And they the were jean terrible. jackets and the jean jackets. They were really terrible. bad. The, the, and the jackets too. Before that, though, was flight pants. And I remember for like one year, flight pants were huge. You like the parachute pants? They were like or... break dancing pants. Remember oh, break dancing? Never I never did either, and I wanted a pair because everybody had them. And then a year later, nobody had them. Then I didn't want a pair anymore. <laughs> See, I probably when I got one. a I pair for I Christmas. Once I realized they started getting big and popular, I think I just wanted to die because I didn't want to be a part of any of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All That's it. it. I'm yep. done. I'm killing. I'm done. <laughs> but it was all of a sudden everybody like break dancing, and it was like the, doing the worm and doing whatever, you know. And then they all had these like canvas pants with fifty zippers on them. Yeah, and then they were gone, and then I think the acid wash jeans came in after that. That was the next big fashion. Do they make acid wash jeans anymore? Yes. Do they really? Do they? Are they? Are they making? Still see a... them? Yeah, I've still seen them in places. It's, they... it's... Are they making a comeback? I don't know who wears them. I mean, a lot of that stuff has come back. Uh, a lot of the '80s fashion has well, come back. The ugly uh, sweater has come back because people actually have ugly sweater. The Cosby party. sweater. Yeah, the Cosby sweater. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Remember back in the day when people Huxtable sweaters people wore those unironically back in the day, like uh, you know the yeah. Cosby Show and uh, yep. a different world. Oh yeah, remember a different world, yeah. Dwayne Wayne yeah. or whatever the hell was, was it? It was. I was almost said Dwayne Wade. Doesn't he have Dwayne to Wade. play basketball? <laughs> Dwayne Wayne. He was the guy with those glasses that yep. flipped up. Yeah, yeah. Jasmine right. Guy was on world. that show. But everybody got one of those sweaters for Christmas. You know, and be like, oh, Grandma. Craig's actually a big fan of Claire Huxtable. That's Craig's favorite character of any television show ever. Oh, Claire was guys Oh, she that. seemed like such a bag. A what? Remember a Craig bag. One day, he just could not stand Claire Huxtable. <laughs> well, she did. It was always like, you know, Cosby's the all lovable shucks guy. And I was like, now you know what you're going to have to do when you get home, Theo. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's, and let me tell yeah, you it's a little too much of the sass stuff. <laughs> Then one more thing, Theo. Don't you even think you're going to the football game tomorrow night? Because you're not. You're staying yeah. home and doing chores. It was like, yeah. Didn't like Claire. It was like, God damn it, woman. It, 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 let Cliff eat the goddamn cake. cake. <laughs> let him eat the goddamn cake. He's a doctor, for Christ's sake. Let him eat the cake. I've been delivering the babies all day. I should be allowed to have the chocolate cake when I come home. That's what I should be able to do. Anyway, I think we got off track a little bit here. <laughs> well, we're talking about the Cosby sweater. Right. I mean, oh, yeah. It, it's oh yeah, yeah. It's but that doesn't really relate to hair metal, though. Well, I saw my first hair metal show wearing a Cosby sweater <laughs> and got beat up. Um, <laughs> nerd. Everybody, everybody else here was wearing a uh, uh, denim. Denim jackets with the sleeves cut off with Metallica oh, written yeah. black magic oh. marker across yeah. the back. But, but see, that the, was almost that, that was two jacket art. That was two yeah. groups though. The Metallica group didn't necessarily listen to Poison and Oh God, no! And that's what I was trying to make. The split occurred where by the time the late '80s came around, the hair metal bands appealed to the chicks, and then you had the other guys that had the Metallica or Slayer on the back mm -hmm. or Motorhead. Anthrax. Oh yes, Anthrax. Iron Maiden. Yeah. Yeah, Iron Man. There's always like one guy in your class that listened to Iron Man, and he had everything, and he had every you know the, the Eddie guy or whatever. Breaking up really bad now. What? <laughs> What's that? We're breaking up. Breaking up really bad. Oh. Yeah. For a while there, I could see Craig talking in his voice and thing. It was like martial arts movie or something, and and now it's just gone into straight up breaking up. Oh. Because we. It might, it might be my internet. It kind of goes in and out sometimes. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Just the tip. <laughs> Here's a little tip for you, Brian. <laughs> is guy in that machine? Is he in that box? <laughs> how do you how do you get all you guys in that little box? He, he's trapped. <laughs> how did you guys get guy in there? Oh, uh, so. 
What's going on here? What are we talking about? I don't know. Is it is it better for you, Brian? <laughs> is it good for you? <laughs> is it better for me? Yeah, it's it's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't sound very convincing. A little bit better. Oh, baby, that was enjoyable. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's good. Okay. So, so yeah, we touched the, the with the, the the hairspray, and I think gel. Was it gel and mousse were kind of basically products of the 80s. I think they were kind of invented and really marketed in the 80s, and I think that the hair metal kind of explosion just, you know. Aquanet. Well, yeah, Aquanet's hair, yeah, the hairspray too, but nothing got the hold quite like the mousse. Like, uh, like L.A. Looks or whatever yes, the hell it was yes, called. Yes, yes, that was that was a big brand. No, oh. got it. Yeah, mousse. I to, used mousse. Had to have the mousse. It was really weird. It was like you 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 put a big, you fill up your hand with cream and then you throw it <laughs> on your head and you wonder if it's gonna turn out okay and you don't know. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, I used mousse. It was really bizarre. Yeah, it was one of those. You had to like use it on your hair wet, and if you used it on your right. hair wet and then you used like the hair dryer, I mean that that stuff was like I, I don't know. Like it a was mold. a big, long, weird production. Yeah. Yeah. So that and then like with that was the hair crimper, which I'm sure you guys. Probably don't know much about. I was familiar with the crimper. I had never used it, but you could right. tell the girls who did. Right. You know? It was just, I mean, it was another kind of ridiculous product of that era. And I think there was a lot of, there were some guys, I think, from the hair metal bands that would use like a strip, like a hair crimper. It was basically, it looked like an accordion. Yeah. Kind of, you know, or an unfolded fan or something like that. And then you'd like spray your hair or you'd get your hair all wet with the mousse and then you'd like shh. Like basically oh. just burn your hair. Is this before the CFC ban or what? <laughs> yeah, well, it was you know it was about that time that the CFC. Yeah, that's, this, yeah, the '80s destroyed the ozone. Is that right. what you're trying that's to tell kind, me? That's that's what it was. I mean, oh God, yes, yes. And it was just like you know, oh, gosh, these pop products are great and shit like that. And I think that was the problem with the hairspray. Everybody kind of got aware of the hairspray doing this, and I don't know if the mousse itself contained any of those same chemicals. So I don't know if it was more of an environmentally friendly. I had just kind of for thing men, I think that's what I use. <laughs> I never really cared about the environment. I just got something I thought it was good for my hair and right. I put it, it in there. I think that was pretty much not our all thought. I didn't really wear hairspray. I, didn't, you know. I did sometimes. I just used my dad's stuff. He had this stuff called the dry look. Oh, that's <laughs> right. It was like in a little a little pump. Oh, bottle, yeah, yeah it, it was like it kind of like foo foo, and you know, <laughs> and, right. psh, 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 right. and you were done. What's so weird the though, dry. you see pictures of people from the 70s, and they're they just it's like they didn't care about their hair, it's like right. sticking up all right. over and big mustaches that Hippie you know, shit. get and then by the time the 80s rolled around, it was complete opposite. It was like everybody's oh, to worry about your hair and your mustache, and you know, you gotta look like like a Lego man or something. Well, I think it was like the, the capitalist, you know, that's like. Capitalism so good was in the eighties. It's like the, the me generation. It's like all about me and making money and doing. You know, sh it was a lot about uh, looking rich. Exactly, <laughs> looking rich and, yeah. and stuff like that. Well, yeah, that he's... that non-materialism thing sure got boring <laughs> quick, didn't it? You're right. Yeah. Let's just accumulate lots of stuff now. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. There's also uh, spandex. Ooh, what see, would the 80s be without freaking spandex? I, I don't know, but guys... What would spandex be without That's the a 80s? bad look on anyone. Yeah, oh my God. Well, guys shouldn't wear spandex, first of all. There's too oh, much for Oh, we did. Oh, yeah. We did in junior high. I, I never did. wore spandex. Yeah. Nah, I never heard God, no. Like well, a, I was in junior no. high when it was popular. If I, I wanted to wear something like that, I'd put my mom's pantyhose on. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's... See, with the, like, like with the girls and all that, I remember it didn't leave much to the imagination. Right. Like the really hot pink. Yeah, there was a couple of girls who wore the hot pink, the so, light blue. You know, with, yeah, with the Cosby kind of sweaters, big over. You know. Yeah, yeah but if you got spandex on a dude and it's not leaving much for the imagination, <laughs> then you got some sackage or something like that. <laughs> a lot of the, you know, a lot of the could tell what kind of... did wear spandex. I yeah. mean, like it was striper. Didn't they had like their yellow and black? Yeah. Sort of spandex yeah. shit going on. Spandex pants, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think even even the uh, what's his name uh, the Iron Maiden guys I think even dabbled in the wore spandex. wore like some like checkered <laughs> spandex and shit. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think even uh, Conway Twitty for a short time wore some spandex. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Cash and his black spandex. <laughs> 
you want to be Will, younger, Jack Willie Nelson. Nelson. <laughs> oh God, that was, that's like a, a little phase of their career. They they didn't look back on very fondly. But no, I remember I I was like twelve years old. And I was so I was so goddamn skinny. I mean, like I had like these spandex shorts, and they and they didn't fit me. <laughs> shorts. <laughs> Yeah, it was short. I think shorts. Well, I didn't want to wear pants, for Christ's sake. <laughs> I, I guess I didn't. I wasn't aware that spandex shorts even existed, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, because that was a, the like guy biker shorts. guys wore them. Yeah, they were like Bicycle something. Shorts. Maybe it was a convenience thing, like the Velcro shoes. You know what I mean? You just got to whip, you know, spandex. Hey, I don't even have to button them. No flyer, no nothing. You know, Velcro shoes. Hey, I don't have to tie my shoes anymore. Yeah. Ball accentuators. <laughs> yeah. Ball accentu- <laughs> you mean like football? <laughs> are you <laughs> soccer ball? What religion are you? Oh. <laughs> You're Jewish. <laughs> Check this out. Hey. No, I just I guess I didn't realize that there were shorts. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no guys, were, no you were, guys you were, wore spandex. Pants. You know, like, you were you were talking about your 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 shorts, and I didn't let you finish your. your well, oh, I was so goddamn skinny that I, I they didn't even fit on me tightly properly. <laughs> well, yeah, they were like kind of loose on me because I was I was such a skinny runt. The funny thing about shorts is back then shorts were like the inseam was like four inches. So if you were a guy and you wore shorts, they were really short. Mm-hmm. You know, and then eventually. Later on, shorts got really big like a kilt. So if you still had an old pair of shorts like that and you'd walk out in public, I mean, it wasn't a good thing. No, you look like Bob Cousy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Those up are John Stockton. John, John right, Stockton. Stockton. John Stockton held on to those short shorts way too long. And he was, for those of you not in the know, like uh, Andrea's giving I'm me a totally funny look here. John, John Stockton is a, a, a white basketball player very good but he held a on to what, the short a white shorts basketball way. player oh he held on they to the have short those. shorts way too long he held on to them at like until he retired didn't he brian in like the late yeah 90s? Stock, stockton was a super cracker but he wore those things in the <laughs> 80s he wore them in the 90s and he kept going in the 2000s yeah he's just like everybody else is switching to the to the longer shorts after jordan started making them popular and everything they're right. they're getting longer and he's just like ah, the hell with you you know, I, like, I like oh, people knowing my religion. Well, he was a Mormon, wasn't he? I don't know. <laughs> Didn't he play for Utah? <laughs> he looked at, yes, the Utah Jazz, the aptly named Utah yeah, Jazz. Yeah, the Utah the Jazz. Whitest state in the Union. As <laughs> That's the why I said he was a Mormon, yeah. wasn't he? Maybe it was something with Mormonism. It was a, they have some of the best jazz clubs in the world there <laughs> <Yeah>. in Utah. <laughs> The jazz capital of the world. Yeah. If you want to hear some good jazz, just go to Salt Lake City. <laughs> Yeah, you'd think the guy that would have moved him from New Orleans to Utah would have been like, should we change this name? Nah. Should we change the name? Nah. Oh, Lordy. Well, I was like, well, I remember the Minnesota North Stars, when they moved to Texas, they dropped the North. And just became the Stars. stars. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they went Didn't to Dallas. They? <sighs> Didn't they? I think they did. It just it made no sense to me at the time. It's like, how can you be the North Stars in freaking Texas? You know, this is well before. How can you be the Tennessee Oilers? Yeah. <laughs> I found it! Yeah. Daddy, daddy, it's gushing right out of the mountain! Jed Clampett shit right there. Jed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Since we were talking about the uh, the hair bands and all that, what about the creation of MTV? Okay, what was it, 81, wasn't it? I think it was earlier than that. I think it was 81. What was the first video on MTV? Well, video killed the radio star. I thought it was straight up 80. Video killed the radio star. I think it was a straight up 80. I think it was a straight up 80. Uh Oh, Andrea is going to look it up. Consult the 80s box. It's so crazy. All I know is, hey, all I know is I've got satellite radio, and so I can hear Alan Hunter, I can hear Mark Goodman, I can hear Martha Quinn, and sadly, I can hear fucking Nina Blackwood on there, (laughs) and that is the most annoying voice I've ever heard. Still talk. August 1st, 1981. I was right. Wow. Eh, eh. Yes. But. Yeah, Nina wasn't she the uh, wasn't she the the blonde gal yeah. with the smoky voice? Yeah. yeah. Yes, it's just that smoky voice has turned into a I'm dying type voice. Hey. It's just not pleasant. Hey, how you doing? It's Nina Blackwood. Ah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Martha, Martha's still Martha's still kind of the same way though. 
No, yeah, Martha. Martha doesn't have blood coming out of her mouth if she does her show. <laughs> she doesn't. She doesn't have a hole cut in her throat. So are they all? Are they all on satellite radio? Do they all have shows yeah. on satellite radio? Yep, they all are. So, uh, the, what, what was the guy's name again? I forget. Mark Goodman and Alan Hunter. Wait, was Goodman the one with the big, the big white guy afro? White man's fro. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. That guy. Yes. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Because in the beginning, that whole network was just was just something for stoners to come home late at night after they were partying and veg out to. Because all they played was music. Well, and it was a network that right. I I mean, as long as it was like MTV, I'm, I'm like, well, what's MTV? Because I didn't have cable TV, mm-hmm. and it was only on cable TV. And then all of a sudden, I had to go over to somebody's house and like started watching it. And it was like, ooh, that's Madonna. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. That's. Uh, when we got cable, I remember I. It was that broad. That's D, that D Snyder girl's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that DD? No, it's just D. That Deanne is Snyder. She sure is fine. <laughs> a little heavy on the makeup. Well, of course, you know, then you had your boy George and and that kind of thing. You know, I mean, I don't know if it gets any more gender bending. Than that. <laughs> I mean, seriously, what what percentage? Of people, when the Culture Club debuted, actually realized that Boy George was a man. Seriously. Oh, I knew. I knew it was a man right away. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, initially? Really? Yeah. I think so, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's right there. I think it name. took a while for a, for some. I think it took a while. Yeah, but if you didn't know his name was Boy George. But it was... <laughs> if you just saw the Culture Club and you're like, oh, that's that's <laughs> like a tra- transgender person, you know? Right. That's That's somebody with, like... Two sets of genitalia. Is that possible? <laughs> because if that is, I kind of want to. Hermaphrodite. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, it's possible. Yeah. No, the, I don't. I, 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 you know, I don't think I even questioned the fact that you know was a man. I mean, I think the '80s were such a de- decade that being that you know there was no sitting there wondering is that a man? Is that a woman? What is that? Okay. You know, what is that? I mean, I just think that the fashion was that far off the wall that it was it was like nothing at least to me because that that was you know that that was a guy singing and not a girl okay but i spent you know hours in front of the tv watching mtv as well i mean just did you get sick of 99 loft balloons like i did oh god no i love that song <laughs> that was the, the gal <laughs> with the hairy pits wasn't it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah and there was a german Nina. version and an american version well, it was she was a german artist right but the the, then every artist. now and then they play the german video and yeah being, yeah, and then they translated it into English. Sure. Yeah, where she was, she came out there and she was like, like and like and like and like and like and strudel, 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 toaster strudel. Her name was Singrid. Singrid. <laughs> so, what point did MTV then like quit being MTV? Well, that's like. Because I mean, real that's world. in the '90s, yes, that's what it's. That was the that came to mind with the real world. I think I think when real world came along, it ceased to be a music station. Right. Yeah. Like, oh my God, look at these ratings! Holy yeah. shit, this is what we have to do from now on. It's like, fuck the music. Real world and Beavis right. and Butthead. Yeah. You know, yeah. was Beavis and Butthead originally on MTV? Yeah. 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 Oh. It was under yeah. Liquid. Television. Real world. I, real world. One of the first reality shows ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What? Well, see, I remember the uh, the game show. That they used to have oh, on the late eighties, remote control. Oh, Colin Quinn, yes, Colin, Colin Quinn, yes. and uh, Kari Wurr before she yep. before she started doing soft porn. Yeah, she was on that. That was great. I still remember the the song from that remote control. Yeah, so I've got videos because I, re- I would record one hundred and twenty minutes because you know that's the kind of music that I was in, and then it was like late at night, and when one hundred twenty minutes was on, so I had to like record because I had to go to bed. Ooh, you didn't, were hardcore. Didn't yeah. they only have 120 minutes worth of videos? In, well, in that's the what that 120 minutes was the name of their their alt music mm. show. So that's where you would hear like Sisters of Mercy and your Jesus and Mary Chain and and Jay's stuff that Edition. wasn't mainstream, yeah. right? That they wouldn't play. I just remember early early days early days of MTV. I, we didn't have like movie channels. My brother and I so. We didn't get to see boobs that much, so we would go on there and look for hot for teacher or girls, girls, girls <laughs> at any given time. Something, something Especially with... if it's after 10 o'clock at night on a Saturday. Oh my god, that's the fucking Van Halen, man. I don't know, would they be considered Van Halen? Van Halen wasn't... Fucking David Lee Roth, come on. 
Yeah, but I he think just, so. To me, they would be. Yeah, ha- spandex wearing, hair teasing. That was for one album. That was for 1984, and then that was it. Seriously? Yeah, because because really, before right. that, fair warning and stuff, they were just well, yeah. Because if you a, watch the video, to jump. Right. He's wearing spandex in that video. Right, but it was like one album, and that was and that was almost like they sold out. Because I remember when that album came out, it was like, oh man, did you hear the new Van Halen? Even though Hot for Teacher is an incredible song. It was actually only a couple of songs on 1984 that had the heavy synth sound. That's true. Like Jump and that uh, I'll Wait. Yeah, it was a very synth heavy. And then there was yeah, like you one watch other Jump, song. That's 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 a hair band. Right. Yeah, but like Hot for Teacher, that doesn't have any synth in it. Panama. Right. No, they were not a traditional hair band. No. Thank God someone didn't. Thank God, is like, that def- is that what defines the hair band? Is the the synth? Well, no. I see now, let imagine if Dennis DeYoung from Styx started wearing spandex, <laughs> it would have killed the whole genre or something, you know. Dennis DeYoung killed were, Styx. Yeah, well, Dennis DeYoung <laughs> did kill Styx, but no, it wasn't the synth thing made you a hair band just because you had crunchy guitars and a synth. It, it was a look. Mm-hmm. It was a definite look. It was it was the spandex. Now the see. Singer. If Van Halen would have come along in 1983, 1984 sure. with that look, but they they had been a band since what, like, I, I don't know, before their first album came out in 78, okay. you know, they were just, they were a hard rock group, yeah, is right. what they were, you know. They they didn't begin life as a hair band. Like bands like the Scorpions kind of morphed into a little bit of that, because I remember seeing footage of, you know, what was the guy from the Scorpions? Klaus Mine? Is it not the lead singer? Kla- I'm Klaus! Because he used to have this show called Metal Shop that would be on the radio. Remember Metal Shop? Yeah. It was like, this is Klaus Mine from the Scorpions and you're listening to Metal Shop! They had a guy named but, Rudolph. In yeah, that Rudolph too, yeah. Schenker was in there and Lars Ulrich, I believe. <laughs> it was like every stereotypical German dude name. Adolf yeah. Lars. And- <laughs> uh, those, those bands, I don't know about you guys, those bands scared me a little bit. I mean, when I was a kid living in like suburban Fort Worth, man, watching videos of some of those metal bands like Judas Priest and Iron oh, yeah. Maiden, those yeah. bands scared the they shit out of me. They were supposed to, yeah. yeah. They were supposed to kind of, you know, make your parents go, ooh. Well, and that's, yeah, that's where the satanic. Not just my parents, me. They made me go, ooh. I mean, they, they represented something dark. Yeah, well, but you're supposed to play the record backwards and then listen to the messages. To and then go kill yourself. And then kill yourself, yeah. <laughs> Just do it. Like, isn't that the... That's right. There was a lot of suicides and stuff like that blamed on... The Kevin Judas Min- Priest song was yes. it supposedly said, Just do it, I believe. Or oh, was it the also, uh, um, well, s- Solution Suicide? Or, uh, that went to trial. That, went to a, that was a major trial. Solution. I mean, yeah. a lot of money got spent on that trial. And, sure. uh, of course, the, the plaintiffs lost desperately. I mean, well, bad. Well, the kid was, like, depressed and all that stuff and went and blew his brains out while he was listening to that Ozzy Osbourne album. And and, and the, his parents looked at it and saw there was a song on there that was called Suicide Solution. Which, Solution, yeah. Which was about drinking yourself to <laughs> death. Is, you, think, you think I'm smart enough to put a backwards message on my yeah, nose? <laughs> here's, here's, I'm not that smart because this is <laughs> listen poor, to him sometimes. Poor Ozzy <laughs> sitting there like, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah, so the backwards message is, <laughs> what, what, what's going on here? I don't know anything about the backwards messages. The Judas Priest thing, though, that that result, that was a dual deal. That was a They had a suicide pact. And one of the kids died. The other yeah. one might turn into the elephant man for a while. Oh, the other one like blew half his. I'm not trying to make light of the fact that it was his deformities, but that's yeah. what happened. And then they made that movie with Cher. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Oh man, it was a natural cast <laughs> for it. <laughs> Gotta get that guy from that Judas Priest suicide. <laughs> oh my god. That was below the belt, Pringle. Oh, well. hey. Um. But yeah, the whole suicide solution thing. And then there was, a, I remember watching this special, a Geraldo special. Remember when Geraldo oh, had a talk right. show? Right. They had a whole show, you can find it on YouTube to this day, dedicated to Satanism and how to find out if your kid is a devil worshiper <laughs> and what to look for on album covers, what to look right. for in lyrics of heavy metal albums. It's hysterical because well, they're dead serious. They are dead serious. That's what this, and this is when the, the sticker shit started. Yeah, Party yeah, the PMRC. With, yeah, with Tipper Gore, wasn't it? Yep, Tipper yeah. Gore was a big one behind that. Yeah. It's like, you're watching this going, my God, they're dead serious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like they, they, they think they originally wanted to make ratings for albums, and then when that fell through, 
then it became like warning stickers, explicit content, or some shit like that. And yeah. It's just... Well, and some artists, I think... See, my, my parents never had those concerns. My parents never had those worries, is because yeah. I didn't buy those kind of albums. I bought, like, Dirty Mind by Prince, or... <laughs> They, the oh, biggest concern was me being fruity, wow. I think. <laughs> wow. I didn't have warning stickers for that. <laughs> but I, I remember seeing, I, I did buy some of that Satanistic uh, rock back then. I remember the Dio emblem. When when you buy like Dio Holy Diver, Dio actually spelled out devil or something backwards. And I think they did it on purpose just to screw with people. Are well, they going to call us Satanists? Well, we'll give them what they want. Yeah. you know. And, and part of it, I mean... It's a marketing ploy. You're going to sell more. Hey, guess what? I think they're from the devil. Well, guess what? You've just sold 500,000 more mm-hmm. records for this artist. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you, you, you've you made them taboo, and now, right. now right. kids all want to go buy it. That was why, like I said. Maybe again, they should have put stickers. Maybe they should have put stickers on some of the print stuff, because I would have liked to have known in advance that he was wearing panties on the back of Dirty hey. Mind. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sheila E., if there ever was a devil worshiper, Sheila E. She, was she the glamorous life chick? She, she was the drummer. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She wants to lead yep. a glamorous life. Yeah, I remember that song. Uh, no. Yep. How, how'd that go? <laughs> but, oh, <my> God. <laughs> something like that. But I remember that also like the, the Van Halen uh, 1984. It was an angel smoking. Oh, yeah, the little, was, the little angel yeah, kid. Yeah, and it was like, oh, boy, if we put this on, all our kids are going to smoke, you know, because... Yeah. So there were yeah. there were big concerns about that, but these artists were specifically putting out things to shock all these morons out there who actually thought that this stuff was going to influence their kids, right. and not you know I mean not just you, your kids. And it did it did for a while. There was a trend of like infants uh, picking up the cigarette. And there was there, there was bit. especially <laughs> angel infants, and infants with wings were the ones that were smoking more. You know so. <laughs> Angel brand cigarettes. <laughs> they did statistically, those incidents were on the rise in the mid 80s. <laughs> this is true. Baby smoking. Way up. Oh. Oh. But uh, David Lee Roth was an interesting case because when he, depending on who you talk to, he either left Van Halen or got kicked, kicked out, out of the group, yeah. depending on who you talk to. But then the first album that he put out, Eat em and Smile. Mm-hmm. was pretty good. Is that the one with California Girls? No, that was an EP called uh, Crazy from the Heat Okay, that he put out. What was what was one of the... Oh, you're talking about the album, Craig, that had Steve Vai on guitar. Yeah, with Yankee Rose on it. Yes. Okay. And uh, Going Crazy and all it's that stuff. It's a very stuff. good album. And there's only like one or two songs that actually like have synthesizers, and the rest of it is like raw sounding rock or like Yankee Rose, a very right. raw it was very sounding good. rock tune, yeah. But then, but then David Lee Roth kind of kind of turned '80s pop on the next one. Remember Skyscraper? Remember oh, yeah. the song Just Like Paradise? Yes. And I don't wanna go home. He have he, you have you seen his his? <laughs> he did this like. In the past year, he, there's like a bluegrass version of Jump. I heard that about he's it. doing with some bluegrass guys playing banjo. How do you? <laughs> how the hell do you turn that into a bluegrass song? It is so disturbing. There, it's such a I've lost my mind moment for David Lee Roth. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that ship sailed a number of oh, years completely. ago. And he's like, he's just on stage with these banjo guys, and he's got the biggest shit eating grin on his face. It's so <laughs> crazy to watch. Every time David Lee Roth turns up in the media somewhere, he's just he's embarrassing himself somehow. Right. He's either making a complete yeah. ass of himself out in public somewhere, or he's getting busted buying pot. Well, you I know, thought he that... became an EMT or something. Well, see, like... I thought he just kind of like after the the solo shit, just kind of like disappeared. No, into I thought he like he did some weird. Like, I wouldn't want that scary fucker trying to save my life. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm serious. That's what I thought I heard. Became like an EMT, or he like started do- doing something real oddball like that. Was... Instead of clear, you know, jump, <laughs> jump, <laughs> boom. Yeah, <I'm> <laughs> like, the, f- the building's up. Much- Go ahead, jump. <laughs> Might as well jump. <laughs> Point <in> the. <laughs> hey guys, while we're on the subject of Van Halen, I want to get your thoughts on. Um, okay, so Eddie Van Halen. Uh, for a while was dating and then eventually married Valerie Bertinelli. When did she start the slide and start looking like his very feminine twin? 
<laughs> when and why did that happen? Well, they 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 both started. She started looking just like him. You mean like in the late eighties? There. Yeah, maybe. When they were on Saturday Night, they made an appearance together on Saturday Night Live, and both of them had like the poofed out eighties hair, mm-hmm. and both of was them. Was it the had... hair? Is that all it was? Do you think? Well, and, and, and you know, they, lot, but yeah. they were both kind of pale looking, you know, because even Valerie at the time was was doing coke and all that stuff too. You know, she had True. that girl next door image, but she was partying a lot, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah. But they did kind of look a lot like each other, like a human being and their pet that hang around each right. other all the time. Which yeah. was not good because she was so gorgeous. Oh yeah, dude, she was one of my first. TV crushes when I was a kid was Valerie Bertinelli on One Day at a Time. Mine was Schneider. I was, I was more into the <laughs> I always thought Schneider kind of had <laughs> anything Schneider else needs fixing in him. <laughs> Just what you just what you want is the is the middle aged handyman with access to your two teenage yeah. girls in their apartment okay. twenty four hours a day. Yeah. What kind of apartment are you living in when this guy needs to like constantly be there fixing stuff? I would probably move after a while. Well, I fixed that toilet again. It's like you know. This this apartment sucks. You gotta like, damn, what are you girls eating? Yeah. Like, walking in with a plunger. <laughs> <laughs> For uh, musicians, there was somebody else I wanted to get to, too, like, uh, uh, somebody brought up with, uh, when hair Red. music started tr- going to, like, where, where girls, right. girl next door type started listening to it, Bon Jovi started yeah. ushering a lot of that in. Yeah. It never was into Bon Jovi, because neither, it was, it was, it was, I, it was a, oh, you didn't? It no, didn't but that's ever. a legitimate hair band, in my, in my, in my mind it is. Yeah. Yeah, the hair That's pop. That's a hair band. Hair pop, yeah. Yeah. Hair pop, yeah, exactly. Because when Slippery When Wet uh-huh. got popular, holy shit. Right. It was just out of control. Right. They were on MTV all the time. Yeah. yeah. You know, Slippery with wet, uh, slip When Wet, by the way, is, is what the biker chick writes on Steve Martin's penis in The Jerk while they're up on some ride. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> No Just way. thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> <coughs> what? I totally missed that. What? Did you ever see The Jerk? Okay, on The yeah, Jerk, the in the jerk. movie The Jerk, Steve Martin is up there on some ride, like a Ferris wheel with this biker chick. Uh-huh. And she takes a, a Sharpie out and writes Slippery with Wet on... Slippery on when his... Wet. Slippery, yep. Yeah. On Steve Martin's dick. On his special purpose? Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's where Bon Jovi got the inspiration. I had, well, how did you find that out? Could be. How do you know that? Maybe like well, that's all the movie. It's in the movie. They don't show yeah, it. Yeah. Well, see, I I heard that the the cover that came out of Slippery When Wet was actually the second cover. The original one got rejected. It was a picture of Steve Martin's penis. <laughs> I heard Bon Jovi's doing a bluegrass version of <laughs> <laughs> You Give Love a Bad Name. <laughs> yeah. Actually, was... actually, Steve Martin made some pretty good bluegrass. Was it was it in the dialogue? Maybe that's what it. The thing in the jerk. I'm sorry. I'm not going to get over. Yes, it. it's in the dialogue. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, there's there's no close up shot of Martin's cock. Okay. <laughs> it was 1980. Nobody's cock was on a in a movie back then. You know. Well, I just picture picture his. I just picture Steve Martin's dick with like one of those fake arrows through the head. You know? <laughs> oh. And there's the cover of the Bon Jovi album that got slippery when wet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, see, I wasn't, I wasn't all that into Bon Jovi, but when I think about Bon Jovi, that's that's kind of what I, the mullet and the denim and yeah. and, and leather chaps are what come to mind. But but see, you had, it's like the, the you had to have the title, the suggestive title, like Whitesnake was slided in, ooh, yeah. you know, yeah. and slippery when wet, yeah. That's creepy. Well, yeah, that's, I know. That's, you know, that's always the thing, and it's like... You know, imagine you had your teenage daughter coming home and daddy seeing your CD cover with some dude wearing makeup and long hair with a title that said, slide it in. <laughs> you know, no wonder why the girl's confused. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, in fact, I think if I had the option, I would rather her listen to devil worshiping music than <laughs> some guy telling her to slide it in. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. You want to worship the devil? Fine. At least you, you know. won't get pregnant or DD. Yeah, that's the important. Sacrifice part. a couple of animals. You know who cares? But uh, Bon Jovi, 
And then there was another one I was thinking of as well. Oh, yeah, um, Def Leppard. Village People. Yes. Village People? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They you made, were a big fan of they that. They made right? one glam ba- uh, glam album. Um, who did you just say? Def Leppard. Def Leppard, Def Leppard. yes. Because they were actually a rock group in the yeah. beginning of the 80s. Yeah, there was that. They were, but God, some of their songs are so pop. Oh, it was right. just awful. Well, once they got to Hysteria. Yeah, that was the album. Right. My was God, the album. it's just... It's just so soaked in this overproduced 80s sound mm-hmm. with the big drums and the echoey shit. And right. all that. I hate to say it, but that's not the only Def Leppard I like. <laughs> that's the kind of cheese ball that I am. Yeah, see, I can't, I can't. The only song off of Hysteria I can even listen to anymore is Animal. That's it. I still do like that song. The guy from the Muppets? <laughs> oh, now I, I remember the video, and I would cringe every time it came on. They were at the MTV. circus. Yes, and it, it, it like started with the smoke. The one that or the fog or something I, like that. The one that I hate. Pour some sugar on me. I don't Good. like that. Oh God, that song is awful. That's what they say in there. Nah, wait. And, and that song, you couldn't escape that song. The summer it was popular, you couldn't yeah. escape it. You couldn't go anywhere without it. hearing it. It was awful. Yeah. Listen to that song today. It is fucking awful. awful. Isn't there their, their drummer? He was the guy with like he, he had no limbs or something. Right. right? No arms, no legs. Well, yeah. Or yeah. accident or something like that, and he lost his arms. So yeah. he started. He lost how- one arm. They actually <laughs> oh, he lost all, all his, his arms. He lost both. First. It wasn't a pinhead <laughs> drumming or something. You know, I mean, geez. he lost both his. <laughs> <laughs> his arms and his legs are gone. He had his teeth. Right. That's about it. Drumming with his feet. Uh, he was missing. Mouth. He was he missing was, one, one arm. arm. Oh. So he played, and he did. He played with his feet. You know, more than what you. Yeah, know. yeah. yeah. Most drummers do play with their feet. Yeah, that reminds me. That reminds me on the topic. I got a question. Uh huh. What has seven arms and sucks? What? Def Leppard. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was it? Def Leppard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh boy. Yeah. You know it's interesting though. <laughs> with all this music like like this was considered like bad, you know, like the naughty bands, but the, even worse was the early punk, which I don't know if you guys remember the early punk, but like the Dead Kennedys mm-hmm. and stuff. So mm-hmm. it was like you didn't hear that on any MTV or anything, but this was like real bad stuff. Yeah. Like there was somebody that had an album called Franken Christ or whatever. I think it was the Dead <laughs> Kennedys. You know, but there's Black Flag. The old Henry Rollins stuff was in there. Yeah. And, you know, that was like the They real... eventually started playing that on MTV, but on a completely yeah. show of its own. They wouldn't play it with mainstream 120 stuff. 120 minutes. Huh. That's, yeah, and that's where alternative stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's where they'd play that. They'd play the Dead Kennedys. I've got, I still have like a couple of old VHS tapes with 120 minute shows on them. I do too, but all the people are real hairy in that, and I don't like watching those. Yeah. Oh, that's a different subject. You know what? You know what? I still have on VHS, and it's still in in it's still playable. You can't like hear everything and see everything, but it's still kind of sort of there. What, I've got what? Live Aid. I recorded Live like Aid. Uh, it, wow. you, you recorded it as it happened. You recorded it as it happened. Live. Yeah. It was Sweet. live, and I recorded it on VHS. I've got like Duran Duran on there, and is is that they kept? Remember, they kept going back from England to uh, yeah, I think Philadelphia. Is is that the one where they were interviewing Boy George, and Boy George is like zonked out on heroin? Oh, and they were all like, yeah, like Zeppelin played, or Jimmy Page and Robert Plant played. And I think Jimmy Page is like stumbling on the stage, and hmm. and Queen. No, but the, I, I know the interview you're talking about, Craig. That is. Really disturbing to watch. Yeah, he's like half awake through the whole. He's like, yeah, yeah he's, he's like, standing by Sade and I think Sting and and you can tell they're both in normal shape and yeah, Boy George is just out. I mean, literally, <laughs> he falls asleep several times. <laughs> but a Live Aid that was didn't uh, uh, Mick Jagger and David Bowie wasn't that what they cut Dancing in the yes. Streets for? Yeah, and he yes. also did a duet with uh, Tina Turner. Oh, they yeah, they did, did Honky Tonk Women and something else yep. live on stage. Right. And then there was Band Aid. Wasn't that all... Uh, that was that, that was from the UK. But that was all the hair metal bands getting together and singing, like, no, 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 wasn't it? No, no, no. What? Those, were, those were UK artists. That was brought together, again, by Bob Geldof, who had a lot to do with the Live Aid, but Band Aid was Feed the World. 
Well, I thought like all these guys like Dio all got together and they sang a song also in the eighties and it was like, oh, uh, and it was awful. Do they know? And it was Christmas terrible. Yeah, it was, it was god awful. Oh, you know uh, what I'm talking about? I know it what was, you're talking about, but it's not Band Aid. I thought it was Band Aid, but it was it was all those guys. I thought, that, Snyder I thought Band-Aid and, was the UK one. Might have been. I don't know. Then there was I think it, there was Roll Aid. <laughs> <laughs> Which was a little lot now. No, I know what I know what you're. With, I remember Cindy Lauper in there. Cindy Lauper and um. Oh, I mean, Steve Cindy Perry Lauper. from Journey. There were a lot of hair yeah. metal. And there was Farm Aid. Yes, there I was remember Farm, Farm Aid. Aid too. Yeah. Yes. I don't remember who played that one. I'm Willie Nelson. It was a John Cougar Willie Nelson project, yeah. and yeah. then just kind of John, blew up. John Mellon Cougar Camp played that. Because John one. Cougar yeah. had the rain on the scarecrow, blood on the plow yeah. scene <laughs> at the time. That was like something going, like that. Yeah. I want to get back to the uh, the Mick Jagger David Bowie dancing in the streets video, though. So you know, Brian, I know you you appreciate this one the the ridiculousness of that video because it was. <laughs> Oh, it's insane. It's it's very Jagger Bowie, though. Because it was something they just slapped together. Yeah. Like, for that event. Ew. <laughs> and it, it's the two of them with the goofiest Ew. dancing, and, 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 they're, and they're standing there with their foreheads touching, singing to each other, and... And they're just no, I'm not. Yeah, kidding. that was there was the whole big controversy. Oh my God, are they gay? Yeah, yeah. Because then, then a couple of years later, Bowie's ex-wife came out and said, "Oh, I found the two of them in bed together yeah. way back in the yeah. day." You know, yeah. But that, well, that, that, that video. Thing, there was also a rumor though for a while that I think it was it Geraldo's wife or somebody found him and Mick <laughs> together. <laughs> well, well, Geraldo, I think back in the early '70s. Partied with Jagger and somebody else, right? And now, yeah, he, no, now he's he on Fox News. Or, or two of them. <laughs> yeah, now he's on Fox News yeah. doing like ultra conservative stuff. Boy, how times have changed. Yeah, I was gonna say because you know, I mean, I hate to make it sound like you know, oh my god, they were gay, but I mean, back in the eighties, it's not quite like it is. It's not at all like it is. Well, today. nowadays nobody it's cares. Like, yeah, I mean, it's like back then it was like it was it was it was it was a big deal. It was a big yeah. deal. It was like an insult. How dare you call me gay? you know, kind of a thing and, and very much in the closet kind of living. And it's like, even though you could tell. Well, everybody, right. people seem shocked with Queen when uh, Freddie, Freddie Mercury, Mercury. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, oh my God, he's got AIDS. And, this, you know, right. I mean, it was like, but. Well, he denied he had AIDS he up did, until like two died. days before yeah. he died. Right until he died. Is that what you're talking about? I think the Judas Priest was a bit of a surprise to some of their fans. <laughs> not, not in retrospect when you watch the videos. Holy crap! I mean, there's, there, like you watch because well, he wears videos. that leather. He's got he's got like a studded dog collar on and shit, and he's and and listen to some of the lyrics of of Judas Priest songs like Turbo Lover. He's sitting there like some of the lyrics. He's talking about grabbing somebody from behind and them screaming and shit. <laughs> and it's like <laughs> seriously, listen listen to the well, song Turbo Lover. It's hilarious. They, and well, and even just, if you look at his attire, I mean, just the way he dressed, he was like Glenn the biker guy from the village people yes. at, at another level. All he was yeah. missing was a ball gag in his mouth. Yeah. Right. Did you ever hear the song The Ripper from Ju Judas Priest? That's Probably. Actual, that's an actual song. Boy, it gives new meaning to that. Oh, oh God, <laughs> yeah. And, but, and, and it's like, and, and in retrospect, you look at it and you're like, how could, how could nobody have figured it out? Like George Michael. You know, how many yeah. people knew George Michael was gay? Yeah. I mean, like, like. George I, Michael was gay? <laughs> oh, man. Hey, there goes in another. In the 70s, it was even worse. I mean, right. they used to have to, have, people would ask Elton John in interviews, and it's like, did you really need to ask Elton John? <laughs> right. Is that well, really think, up for question? I think he didn't. I think he said he was, like, bisexual, I think. Yeah. In the mid 70s. Yeah. I think he did too. Yeah. yeah. See, it almost makes you wonder, though. But then he'd look like Mae West on stage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and see, I remember in the 80s, though, he really toned it down. 
He he kind of like instead of like his his big glam kind of thing. Oh yeah. He used to do, yeah. For like I'm still standing and yeah. yeah blue he, eyed. he totally yes, went. He, he took a much more heterosexual kind of turn with the way he dressed. Yeah. But he still wore the earring. But you know the earring was like you know if it's in your right ear that was the whole thing. Oh. If it's in your right ear that means you're gay. But if it's in I remember your left that. ear you're not. Then it's cool. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah if it's in your left ear. If it's in your left ear you're a badass. Yeah. <laughs> And then came Mr. T, and Mr. T had earrings in both ears, and it just confused the hell out of everybody. Yeah, but, but the thing is, if you thought he was cute, you wouldn't have approached him anyway. Hey, he's too scary! Yeah, only if you're Eddie Murphy, maybe, you know. Uh, hey, boy. You know, that whole... Um, hey, boy. <laughs> All right, so we're going to wrap... Look at my cute in jeans. <laughs> I'm ready to fool! So we're going to wrap this one up here, so... And that's our show for this week. Uh, thanks for joining us. Be sure to check us out next week when those 80s kids remember we'll be talking about movies from the 80s. In the meantime, check us out at those80skidsremember.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and SoundCloud. Buy all of our t-shirts, dolls, and assorted other gear that we've got for sale. Or we will have for sale or something. So, this is Rob signing out. This is Andy. This is Craig. Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Oh, bye. <laughs>